next guest is no stranger to controversy. He's the world's number one skeptic. He's made a living out of exposing frauds and charlatans who claim they have psychic ability, and he's managed to upset the odd person along the way. People like Don Lane. Have a look at this. I'm not it defending you, Rick. Well, what I am defending is you. You come over here with this big reputation. You give us a lot of lip service about all the stuff that you're going to prove. You go against a lady like Doris Stokes who never harmed anybody in her whole life, and you call her a charlotte and a fake. You know you a great said, deal about it. Yes, I do. You said that she was a liar on the no, radio. You called her a liar. No. And that woman would no, lie to I anybody. And I don't know whether she's right or wrong, I but she wouldn't lie to anybody. And we're going for a commercial break, and you can piss off. Joe, Don. Yes, he was the mastermind behind the famous Carlos hoax in 1988. Mr. Randy, not Dom, that is. George Negus still has the wet spot on his coat for that, and uh, many others still smart from the memories of accepting the hoax hook, line, and sinker. His name is, of course, his name is, of course, James Randy, and he joins us from Melbourne, where he's a guest of the Australian Skeptics Association, and here in the studio to potentially lock horns with him is the president of uh, the Australian Psychics, Simon Turnbull. How are you, Simon? Welcome back. Mr. Randy, I'm going to start with you, sir. Um, Yuri Geller is, I guess, your most celebrated uh, outing, as you call it, the person who uh, the exposure that you've uh, had to go at most. What, what is it about uh, Yuri Geller that really gets up your nose? Well, he was the first one that came to my attention, Richard. Uh, that is, the first one with a really international profile, and he became the psychic superstar, more or less, of the century. Um, that situation has somewhat changed now. He's uh, essentially in retirement, living in England, from what I understand, and uh, he's now in the business of suing me and many other people and other publishers and trying to, um, I guess, make a living doing that. Do you take um, credit for slowing down his activity somewhat? Well, let's just say that um, my attentions to his career were not welcome. I think I can put it that way, uh, somewhat mildly perhaps, but I think it's true. So what was it that you disliked most? Just that he was basically, as you see it, doing magic and not calling it magic? Well, the, the case is this, and I can say this legally quite safely. Perhaps Mr. Geller does have divine powers. Perhaps he does have some sort of supernatural ability that makes him uh, able to soften metal. If he's doing his spoon-bending trick that way, then I can only say that he's doing it the hard way. How would you suggest he do it? I do it by trickery, and perhaps with, a, with enough um, attention to the problem, he might be able to do it by trickery, too. Hmm. Simon, in our studio here, you're a friend of Yuri Geller's. Um, I gather you're not too impressed with Mr. Randy and what he has to say. No, because he's making a living out, out of, being, out of uh, um, being a charlatan, the fraud, the things he's accusing psychics of. Does Yuri Geller have psychic powers, supernatural Absolutely, powers? Absolutely, I've seen it myself. How do you know? I've been this, this closer. I wasn't in bed with him. <laughs> Not a bit. Ja James Randi, what, what do you say? You've, you, have you been that close to Yuri Geller? Have you seen for yourself that he is a fraud, as you say? Well, um, I'll just put it this way. We have a rather large collection of videotapes of Mr. Geller, some of which have been presented to the official uh, organization in the United States of Magicians, and they're coming down with their decision very shortly. From what I hear, their decision agree agrees with mine that it is most probably a form of trickery rather than divine powers, but again, that's in the hands of the judges at the moment. Most probably or definitely? Surely you're, you're going out on a limb if you're not 100% certain that this man is, in fact, telling fibs. I know what I'm 100% uh, certain of, Richard, but you have to be very careful what you say legally. You can be sued for some things, even if they're true. Okay. Simon, is there it? Well, um, this gentleman here, less than two weeks ago, was judged by a U.S. federal uh, jury uh, as being a liar. And we have documented um, evidence of that. Well, here that, is, that is strictly untrue. Well, well, here it's on the screen, James. Yes, indeed. I'm glad you have it. Uh, you managed to get this clipping that's been circulated all over the world. How clever of well, you. Well, uh, 5,000 people in Baltimore have read it, James. That's right. It was in the Baltimore Sun. And now, now Australians can see it, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How much money did they award the man that I defamed? They awarded uh, Yuri four and a half thousand in Japan no, no, in no, March no. I, this I, year. No, no, That's not my question. Um, and you, uh, no. you, you have to pay Yuri four and a half thousand for another court case no, that's you not lost my in question. Japan for, insul that's not my for insulting question. him in Japan. That's not by my saying question. that there was a, sci uh, a scientist. Um, that's not my there question. There was a scientist, James, that um, uh, killed himself. Out of I did shame, not say that, no. out of shame, you said that. No, I did you not. You said that. that. We've got the stuff here. No, no, you out of shame, out of shame, right? 
out of shame. You have chosen to believe you your master, Mr. Geller. You said that the scientist and you killed himself out of untrue. shame because you debunked Yuri Geller. No, no, you're not listening That's to what, what I'm saying. That's what you said, James. First of all, would you answer my previous question? Let's let's take them one at a time. And they took we? you to court and you lost. Let's try the questions one at a time. Have you no, an answer? There's, not, there's only one question. question. You're a liar. Let's have an answer to my question. What question? The question was, how much did they award the gentleman that they said I defamed in Baltimore? Uh, if I were you, I wouldn't go into that. Well, you won't answer the question, Richard. Because I've got the rest I'll of you the answer I'm sure to you the question. Straight Since to this gentleman that. seems unable to understand a simple question, All right. they I'm gave not, him zero for I'm it. I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. What was I on, will the, what was on the tape? What was on the tape that, the, that was heard in court? I'd like to know what was on the tape. I haven't heard it. Well, there were several Your tapes. solicitors rang this, this morning and said, mm -hmm. Do I have a tape? I haven't heard it. What was on the tape? Tell the whole of Australia what was on the Which tape. Which tape are you speaking of? There were several tapes Tell, played in court. Well, there's only one. You know what there one There were is. three tapes that were played in the court. There's only one, and you know what one it is. I know which one you're referring to. Right. Would you like to tell us what it's all about? You tell us. All right, I will. This is something which, because the postal inspectors in the United States are investigating persons already named for the uh, blackmail attempt that was made on me years ago, because that is currently under investigation, you know very well, sir, that I am not allowed to mention that. If I do, I compromise myself. It's up to you. Okay. okay. No, it isn't. I just, I just, want, I just to wanted to give you the chance. Advisors. Gentlemen, I, I think I'm glad you two aren't in the same studio. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, I wish we were. It's, it's, I wish we were, too. It's compelling stuff watching you two sparring off against each other. Mr. Randy, I'm sure there are some people, certainly at home in our television audience, but yes. maybe in the studio audience, who have had some experience of ESP or supernatural powers. They may believe they do, have, do yes. we Do we have people in the audience here who feel they have been touched in some way at some time? No, we've got all your mob here, Mr. Randy, today. Um, <laughs> you should feel better now, James. How do you explain to the people who have had some experience, Mr. Randy, um, what, what have they been sort of well, lied Richard, to or fibbing to themselves? It would depend on what the experience is. If they think they've seen a UFO, then you have to discuss whether or not it really was a UFO or perhaps just a plane on its way to Auckland. Uh, if you don't identify it, it's unidentified. That doesn't mean it isn't a perfectly ordinary phenomenon. If it's an ESP experiment or a ghost ex experience, pardon me, or a ghost experience, you have to get the details on it before you can examine it properly. Each and every claim has its own uh, assets and it has its own detractions, and you have to discuss them individually. The people who are claiming to have psychic powers, do you think they really believe they have psychic powers Absolutely. or are they just having a land of a sort? No question of it. I think to some people do believe they have psychic powers, that they have psychic experiences. Uh, to them, it's very real. In most cases, when they're examined, they have perfectly mundane explanations. In other cases, we don't know whether they really took place or not. And there is a third classification, of course. They may be genuine psychic experiences, and that's what we're trying to find out. I've never heard James Randi say that before. Why is he saying it now? Well, you haven't all been these listening, years. then. No, no, I've been listening. Yes, well, you haven't heard the it because... The point is, uh, this man you represents a group of people who don't want to maintain... They just want to maintain a position. They're not interested in the truth. Well, I, I, I some think, of the stuff I've got here. I true. think we heard Mr. Randi say then that it's not an absolute position, that you are not ruling out the possibility that maybe there are some people who have supernatural Always power. willing to be shown. All I need to I do is be shown. I love to hear that, because that's exactly what we're saying. I'm not say, uh, look, then James, we agree. James I, this is not personal, but the point is, people like you, people, such, uh, people who, who maintain a position and, and are closed-minded, and, and in your case, of course, making a living out of it, um, is there something have wrong to with account that, for themselves. No, you, you make, you make incre incredible statements that are untrue. Okay? In your book, that's The your Truth opinion. About Yuri Geller, you lied about that's saying that... Yeah, yeah, that's true, right. Yeah. You're saying it first to defuse me. But well, you we lied in the book. And yes, you called the book opinions. The Truth About Yuri Geller. We you both said have he, opinions yeah, on that. We yes. both have opinions. Well, it, may, it maybe looks as if we have some common ground. We've maybe stumbled across some common ground here, which, which we're going to explore next uh, Thursday here on, uh, on Midday. We're going to invite Mr. Randy into the studio here and... Um, his association, the Skeptics Association, not his, but the one that's invited him to Australia, are putting up $30,000 to anyone who can demonstrate before all and sundry that they do, in fact, have supernatural powers. Um, if you are interested in coming in, please contact our producers here at um, Channel 9 in Sydney at the Midday Show. So um, the invitation is open. And you'll, also, you'll be uh, here. Yep, I hope so. <laughs> and also, there, if any, all over Australia, you can ring toll-free 008-6363-33. And uh, talk to a, a live psychic, one-on-one. -on -one. Talk to the psychics. James, do you have uh, the infamous spoons there with you, sir, today? They obtained a couple from the, what is it, the commissary or the canteen or whatever Yeah, the canteen. Well, they're probably well-worn in those ones. <laughs> yes, would you, like, would you like to see a demonstration? Yeah, go on. This one says uh, Gibson's or something, uh, stainless steel. Uh, I have to uh, wrap it here to make sure it's quite solid. 
Uh, I could perhaps demonstrate it for you best just by holding it between my own fingers like this, because I don't have a, another person here to help me, but uh, we'll just stroke it back and forth. Look, it seems, you could almost swear that it seems to get wobbly. It does seem to sort of get rubbery. Doesn't it almost appear to you as if it's getting rubbery? Look, look, it just seems to, uh, what is it? it? Seems to be getting flexible somehow here. This is astonishing, a miracle of the semi-religious nature, but then it's the kind of trick that used to be on the so back it's, of the So it's an illusion. So I've never heard you answer this. Do you believe in God? Uh, which God? <coughs> Thor? Any God? Any God? No, no, I don't. I don't have compelling evidence that convinces me there is a deity. Gee, I bet you don't believe in the tooth fairy or Santa Claus either. <laughs> well, I'm looking into Santa Claus. <laughs> and I'm very seriously wondering about Santa Claus, yes. You can catch James Randi talking at the Australian Skeptics Convention this weekend and at various Melbourne venues next week. For the belie believers, as Simon pointed out, you can call the Australian Psychics free hotline on 008 Triple three. <laughs> Would you please thank um, James Randi and Simon Turnbull. Thank you. Thank you.